Uh, now, teams from around the world are in Milton Keynes this week to compete in a rather unique challenge. They're bidding to win the world's first robot competition that relies on navigating around a city. Can they find items in a supermarket, use a lift, or even serve coffee? Sounds good. Where do I get one? Uh, well, let's find out more as Richard Westcott is in Centre MK for us now. Uh, with a few friends, Richard. Yes, I don't know if your wages and my wages would cover a robot, but maybe in the future. Yeah, we're in the middle of Milton Keynes shopping centre and we've been with these guys. Hello. They've been very well behaved all day. I don't know if we can show this on telly. There is a naked robot, OK, but we'll, uh, we won't embarrass it anymore. But there is a serious point to this competition. Lots of teams have come from all over Europe and they're competing to do these simple tasks like you were talking about. Sound easy to us, but for a robot, they're actually quite complex. And critically, they've done it in a place where the public can just walk past, interact with the robots, see what's going on, pop in and even touch some of the robots. They let sort of the kids in to come and have a little go with the robots because they want people to start getting used to the idea of having robots in our homes. Something weird is going on in Milton Keynes, and that is why everyone is looking at me. They won't be taking over the world just yet. This order is for you. In fact, the current generation of robots are still a bit like children. They're having to learn how to do basic things we take for granted, like pick up shopping without crushing it, open a door, or just socialise. Hello, Richard. Hello. It is nice to meet you. And you? I love your work, by the way. Thank you very much. So, teams from across Europe are competing to see whose robot does it best. I would like to stand at the back of the lift. Be my guest. Over four days, they've been taking on various challenges in a shopping centre in Milton Keynes. One of the big challenges for robotics is public acceptance. They have to design robots that people actually like, that don't freak them out, that aren't creepy, that aren't intimidating. And that's the point of Pepper here. Do you want to share a lift with a robot? They picked a shopping centre so they can see what people think. I think it's absolutely amazing, absolutely wonderful, the things they can do and the way they're developing. A little bit freaked out, but this is great because you can actually see it in action and see what they're actually going to look like, how they're going to perform. The jury's out. <laughs> I still prefer personal contact with a human being. <laughs> Is someone trying to make me a joke? With it being in a, a venue like this, people can come up. Like People are really sceptical about robots in general, especially when they're interacting with people. Um, I think a lot of people think about the whole, oh, they're going to take over the world thing, and they're not. They're, they're designed to help and to interact, so I think people get to see that they're actually not that scary. The whole point of the competition is that the teams learn by making mistakes because the technology is difficult. We get a lot and lots of failures, even on the fourth day. Uh, this is the third day of competition, fourth day including the rehearsal, and you see still the robots really doing, uh, making very silly mistakes that uh, you know, even children won't, won't do. A robotic future could bring problems. The threat to our privacy, the threat to jobs. <laughs> I doubt my generation will be routinely sharing a house with a smart, empathetic robot. But their generation probably will. No, I cannot. And they seem pretty relaxed with the idea. Can you explain? Richard Westcott, BBC no. Lookeast, Milton Keynes. No.